Hey there, photo friends. Um, welcome to my Emulsion Lab slash Darkroom. Uh, this will be my first official video for the YouTube channel. Um, I wanted to do a live stream tonight uh, because I've been doing um, live streams on my Instagram, um, printing in the Darkroom. However, um, I have to wait my 24 hours for my account to get verified, and I also don't have any developer. So uh, if you follow along uh, at the museum where I work, you may have seen my in-depth video on how to make your own photo developer. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take you through this in more or less real time right now, so you can actually see just how easy it is. And this is actually how I do it when I'm at home. So we're going to use a hot plate stirrer here, and I'm going to get this heat up, bring that up to 52 degrees Celsius. All right, I'm gonna get my stirrer moving. All right, now I'm gonna put this in. This is my hot water, so this is about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 52 degrees Celsius, okay? And we're gonna let this mix. So I have my uh, magnetic stirring bean moving in here. Let's get that going a little bit. All right, and now we have all our parts and pieces. So here's everything we need. Uh, first, we have our reducing agents. So we have metal and hydroquinone. Metal and hydroquinone can be used separately, uh, but they don't work that great by themselves. They work even better when you use them in combination. We have our preservative, sodium sulfite, our accelerator, sodium carbonate, and our restrainer, potassium bromide. So now that we have this mixing, let's go ahead and just start adding our stuffs. All right. Woo. Yeah. So sometimes that bean will kick around. We'll just turn that back off All right. and get that going again. So um, I like to use these uh, paper cups because um, I could just throw them out in the garbage and recycle them and I don't feel bad about wasting plastic using any kind of Dixie cup. And of course, it doesn't want to cooperate. So as you can see, this is how it really happens sometimes. So next in, sodium sulfite. All right, and just to give you an idea, um, I have, let's see here, I have three grams of metal. That was 45 grams of sodium sulfite. All right, once this is dissolved, we're gonna add 12 grams of hydroquinone, 80 grams of sodium carbonate, and two grams of potassium bromide. I should be wearing my gloves, so I'm just gonna kick on a pair of gloves while this mixes. Now, you don't need a hot plate stirrer to do this, okay? Um, you can just use real warm water and you can sit there and mix it with a stirring rod. However, I have the mixer, so I like to use the mixer. Um, it makes things a little easier if the bean wants to cooperate. All right, and what you do is you just let it dissolve. Once it dissolves, you add the next chemical, and that's about as simple as it is. Okay, so um, sodium sulfite, right? Sodium sulfite is the preservative. The preservative, because you're reducing agents want to oxidize. So by adding a preservative in there, it essentially, um, it, it just helps it last longer. If we didn't have the preservative, as the developers are exposed to air in your water, they're gonna oxidize and your developer's gonna go bad and you're not gonna get um, solid development. You might get fog, you might not get anything. So we wanna make sure that we have um, good strong development. And I'm just gonna help this along a little bit from the top here, just get these kind of mixing in off the sides. All right. The hot plate's really helpful because I don't have to worry about the water cooling off as I'm mixing my developer. All right. And again, I'll just help it along a little bit because there's a lot of sodium sulfite. So sometimes some of these chemicals take a little bit longer to go in the solution than others. You can see the metal went in the solution very quickly. The sodium sulfite takes a little bit of time. So we'll just help this along a little bit. Okay. Now you might say, Nick, why do I want to do this? Why can't I just go out and buy a bag of Dettol? Well, uh, D72, um, any developer, you know, with the exception of what you're going to get commercially, 
right? They're mixed up, they're easy to get, um, but they're not that expensive. But it's way cheaper to buy all the raw chemistry and keep it stored and then mix it as needed, right? Because, um, you know, I spend some money on all the raw materials and then I have huge amounts of it that I just keep ready to go. So as soon as I need developer, it's ready to go. I don't have to wait and try to order a new bag and you know have several bags because again, if you wanna get 10 bags of developer, that might cost you a hundred bucks. You could spend a hundred dollars on raw chemistry and you can make more than 10 liters worth of developer with all that raw chemistry. So once you're set up and you buy all the raw chems, it's more cost effective over time to to buy the raw chemistry and mix your stuff up. And again, this is gonna make one liter. If I didn't wanna make one liter, I could cut this recipe in half. If I wanted to make more than one liter, I could double or triple the recipe to make uh, two liters and or a gallon. All right, so that looks like our sodium sulfites come and, come and do here. All right, looking good. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our hydroquinone. This is our second reducing agent. And you'll see this one goes into solution a little quicker than the sodium sulfite will. <clears throat> and it's, it's so simple because again, I need developer, I can mix developer. And as soon as I'm done with this video, if I really want to, I can go ahead and dilute this with uh, the water to my working dilution, cool it off, and it's ready to go. So as soon as I need my developer, I can mix it from scratch because I have the raw chemistry hanging out in my darkroom here, and it's ready to go. So I can see that my hydroquinone is gone, so now we're gonna go ahead and add that 80 grams of sodium carbonate, and I'm just gonna assist this as it mixes. All right, let's get that all in there, nice and nice. This one takes the longest to, do, to dissolve because there's the most of it. So we're gonna help that along. Now, where I messed up was I used a smaller magnet. What I should have done was used the larger magnet, right? And it has more area to mix inside the thing. Um, you can use larger, smaller, or even tiny, teeny tiny magnets, depending on, you know, how big your beaker is and what you're trying to make. So um, it's okay, can't win them all. And that's part of what I'm trying to do with uh, these videos is to show you how I work in real time. Sometimes I mess up in the dark room. Sometimes I make silly mistakes. Sometimes I have great success from those silly mistakes. Um, but again, little things like this. If you put the wrong size bean in there, just grab your stirring rod and you'll help it along. Now, there's all sorts of developers that you can mix. This is my favorite paper developer, so that's what I like to use. I like to develop with D76 for my film. I like to develop with Dectol for my paper, or D72. <laughs> I gotta correct myself there again. Um, again, if I need D76, I mix that from scratch, just like I mix my D72 from scratch. The difference between D76 and D72 is D72 is an MQ developer, so metal hydroquinone. Um, D76 is a fine grain developer. It's better for film and it has an excess of sodium sulfite. So sodium sulfite will work as a preservative, but it also can um, chew up your grain first before it converts it back into silver metal. And that helps give you that fine grain effect. But again, any developer that you want to get, Rodinol, um, you know, HC110 is probably gonna be hard to mix for yourself, but um, any developer that's out there, try different formulas. There's some stuff that might work great. There's other stuff that might work, you know, not so great, but that's the beauty of photography is that you can experiment and you can try different things and see the effects that you get. So this is almost completely dissolved. We'll give this a little bit more time here. And now we're gonna put in our bromide. The bromide is a restrainer. And if you wanna think of our developer and our paper in our tray, like a party, 
right? The bromide is essentially the bouncer. It's going to keep everybody from getting out of control, right? And fog is what we don't want to happen. Fog is the party pooper, right? That's the thing that's going to ruin the developing party. And the bromide is what's going to help keep everybody from, have, uh, you know, from getting too wild, but still have a good time. So let's add our bromide. All right, let's get this finished up. Once that bromide's dissolved, we're pretty much done. Just like that, I have fresh developer that's ready to go. Now, um, the one thing that I'm missing here is, well, it's not missing, it's the final step. All right, so I had 750 milliliters of distilled water. I had three grams of metal, 45 grams sodium sulfite, 12 grams hydroquinone, 80 grams sodium carbonate, and two grams potassium bromide. That makes our developer solution. Now, the final step here is to get our bottle, right? Make sure it's labeled. Let's grab a tray so we don't make a mess here. And let's put our thermocouple. We'll just wipe that down real quick. Okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pour this into our final storage vessel. Catch your bean. And then the final step is to add enough um, extra water to bring it up to one liter. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in that 250 mils. All right. Just like that, make sure you label your bottle and we have photo developer ready to go, just like that.